Hello, hello, di kelas. Hello. Now, hold on just one moment, if you will. Hold on, something's going on and not doing what I wish. There it goes. All right. So this is continuation of yesterday of the SCP tier list for your class. All right, the next SCP on the list is SCP-022-J. SCP-022-J is a pure s- solid form of chemical element commonly known as titanium of atomic number of 22, an average molar mass of 47.86 grams per uh, grams atom molecules. In its active s- state, SCP-022-J appears as shiny hard solid of density approximately 4.5 grams, grams and melting point of approximately 1940 Kelvin. SCP-022-J behaves as a paramagnetic metal in most aspects and possesses a ten- tensile strength of roughly 434 MPa, remarkable for its low dis- density. SCP-022-J is an infohazard. Knowledge about it causes the manifestation of two distinct sets of symptoms, designated as SCP-022-J-1 and SCP-022-J-2. SCP-022-J-1 initially manifests when an individual with no prior Prior knowledge is exposed to incomplete or erroneous information about SCP-022-J's physical properties and his recommended usage. Individuals under the effect of effects of SCP-022-J-1 will gradually begin to assert the superiority of SCP-022-J as a structural material and recommend or attempt to enforce its use as such whenever possible. Even in cases where this has significant negative effect on functionality, common terms used by affected individuals with reference to SCP-022-J-1 include strongest metal in the world, super tough, super metal, refined, impenetrable metal, and the he-man of materials. In many cases, the behavior induces a performance failure or deficiency, and affected individual will refuse to acknowledge that they fucked up seriously. Who the fuck makes a titanium anchor? Anyway, SCP-022-J's role in, in any incident, inventing increasingly bizarre alternative explanations. SCP-022-J-2 manifests when an individual fucking gets a clue sheesh it is so hard to read a goddamn standard is exposed to accurate information about SCP-022-J's physical properties and correct recommend usage guidelines. Individuals have are already affected by SCP-022-J-1 can't fucking get it in their goddamn heads with a hammer. If I hear about titanium being the strongest metal, I will punch them in the dick with the fist made of. Show considerate resistance to SCP-022-J-2. Subjects affected 
affected by SCP-022-J-2 display signs of anger and mental distress and dimensions of pure titanium or its usage to the point of becoming physically violent. This is especially marked when the triggers are usually vectors of SCP-022-J-1, such as a media containing examples of inappropriate uses of SCP-022-J. Treatment of class B amnestics has been shown to no fuck, there's no SCP-022-J-2, there's nothing, Jesus. Sorry about that, guys. There's nothing wrong with me. Anyone reasonable would fucking freak out when seeing this 15th SCP proposal calling for a five foot thick titanium walls. You have punched him too. I'll give him titanium in their damn faces with a titanium item. This is a titanium conspiracy to sell more titanium whatever fuck they make out of titanium i will show them who's bet okay so hmm This is a toughie. Should I go with reassigned or a certain group? Hmm. Let's see. I'm thinking probably reassigned. So, uh, mainly because it doesn't seem to kill people as much or seems like affects people as badly. So I think I'll put it the Rand side. Oh, I see the next SCP. All right, T. Next SCP on the list, 027-J. All right, T. Yeah. There. So our next SCP is SCP zero two seven J. SCP zero two seven J is a Roku cable bo box, Roku cable box television remote control, which appears to have two quantum states, and R dash twenty seven eighty seven. Roku remote, remote control model television, which was so goddamn expensive, which was on sale in 
you agreed on manufactured in 2015. A Fios 20-27 cable box remote, which is goddamn useless because we have Netflix Hulu and Amazon Prime, which is necessary because adults have cable. <laughs> Hold on. At no time can SCP-027-J exist in both states because researcher Benson can't keep track of the guy, goddamn remotes when she's watching her programs. Due to its anomalous effect of making researcher ben Benson a dickhead. Due to its anomalous effect. <laughs> SCP-027-J was first discovered av when, after installing the new Roku TV in the living room, when researcher Benson immediately lost the Roku remote. The Roku remote went missing. After two weeks, the Roku remote was discovered, and the cable box rem remote promptly disappeared. Researcher Benson lost my remote to stop, uh, stop me from watching Dance Moms. <laughs> scp 27 Change quantum states leading to the discovery of the nature of SCP 027 J. Addendum A on redacted. For God's sakes, Jillian, stop redacting my notes. No. It was discovered that both the cable bo box and Roku have smartphone apps which can control both devices. Researcher Benson kindly installed these apps and set them up on both his and Researcher Benson's smartphones. Both applications were installed, and SCP-027-J's effect now appears to extend to Researcher Benson's phone now, too, since that's either dead or missing all the time. For fuck's sakes, Phil, it's not that big of a deal when I'm home. Just stop losing the goddamn remotes. <laughs> research into the spread of scp 27 days effect in Jillian's inability to keep track of a thousand dollar phone it was 450 you giant crybaby <laughs> is ongoing Dr. Lawrence note Jesus Christ would you two please get some counseling <laughs> Okay, this is easy. Reclassification. Because it doesn't even hurt anyone. It's just remotes that just keep going missing. <laughs> Definitely reclassification. <laughs> Alrighty. Let's see what's next SCP. SCP-028-DE. Oh, hello? Hello. Hello, Jerry. You have joined. Yes, I have. And I also am show, uh, showing on Discord the ranking of SCPs I've done so far. Oh. And just so you know, I did give one uh, of the joke SCPs a not reclassification, <laughs> mainly because of what. Uh, okay. The reason why I chose a certain group was mainly because basically it's, it, I think it's like either an emoji or a symbol that if you show it to a person, they immediately want it to show it to someone else who's not affected. And it'll keep going and going and going and going and going. <laughs> so technically it is dangerous, but it just doesn't kill. And as you can tell... 
we have reassigned only one person, only affect one person at a time, a certain group at a time, a city, country, continent, SK class, and and ZK. Do you, do you know what ZK is? ZK? Yeah. Um, basically, to explain what it is, it's a uh, end of the re- end of reality scenario. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, K class scenarios? Yeah, ZK is like the worst. <laughs> Wait, is it above? Uh, it's, a, it's above SXK. Yeah, ZK means end of reality, as we know it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I, I caught you up. All right. Now I'll read the description of the next SCP. And if we need any further information, it looks like I have appendicitis. I guess we'll find out what that is later. But anyway, description. SCP-028-DE is Site-DE3. Site-DE3 is the former headquarter of the secret research facility of the former uh, Sonder Commando for... Paranormalize, and until the first appearance of SCP-028-D8, the E-A, during number 28 D E slash I-1, number 028-DE slash I-1 was mainly used to research the, the SKP's work and for storage of SCPs. Oh, hello. Who else joined? I have arrived. Oh, hello, Hatchet. I am reading SCP-028-DE. <laughs> so we can discuss what, where to put it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Anyway. Uh, da, 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 da. After incident number 028-DE-I2 site Dash DE3 was classified as SCP 028 Dash DE, and all stored SCPs are transferred to other facilities. SCP 028 Dash DE consists of 106 rooms on eight levels, which are connected by hallways, staircases, and lifts. All rooms are marked with a, a rune of the Elder Futhark and sometimes uh, Futhark. Got it. <laughs> and s- s- sometimes a number, depending on on their kind. The upper levels contain mostly rooms for personnel, training, and storage. The mid levels contain laboratories, offices, and workshops. The lower levels contain cells and containment rooms. In the cent- center of the facility room is located a hall reaching over four levels. Both accesses are equipped with armored doors and is the second level above the room's ground is a control room with observation windows made from, from bulletproof glass, which leads to the conclusion that uh, that room I was used as a containment room and or exper- experimental laboratory as a containment... Uh, oh, oh, so, fuck. Anyway... However, the SKP has destroyed all records about about the purpose of the room as well as the controls before the Foundation took over. Since incident number 028-DE slash I2, there is a portal in the middle of room I leading to universe U-3378-DE. The portal is currently closed by the the SRAs around SCP-028-DE. Holy shit, SCP-028-DE is a lot of shit. (laughs) (laughs) 
All right, so before, uh, so that's the description of it. I do have appendicitis about it if we want to go read about that because I have no idea whether or not it's dangerous or not. Okay, so you cut you cut off on my end, so it sounded like you randomly said I have appendicitis. <laughs> <laughs> no, she uh, was saying that she basically has things we can read about the FDP to figure out how dangerous. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have show incident protocol S number zero two eight dash de dash i one, open incident number zero two eight dash de slash i two, open protocol Jolner, open protocol Ragnarok, and show appendix. Number 028-DE slash I2-AI. So, uh, which one would you guys want me to open? <laughs> There's like five different ones. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the uh, Norse mythology Minecraft pack, so I guess Ragnarok. <laughs> Well, I guess that's one way. <laughs> All right. All right. So here's what it, what it says. While you are allowed to take the insight of the following, I highly recommend refraining from doing so. Not everything we may know is something we should know. You probably know several things you would prefer not to know, and this is likely one of these because they are terrifying hindering us to make the right decisions and because they are giving us doubts. Doubts if they if they are the right things to do, whether we can afford to do them. From an ethical point of view, not that we have had a choice, such protocols are carefully thought out, agreed on by the O5 and, and the Ethics Committee. And a last resort we have. If we hesitate, we will not uh, get to witness how SCP 2000 or other through the while SCP is sweeping up the remains of our world. 04 1. Alright. Protocol Ragnarok is the last resort to prevent a D class invasion scenario. Under the guise of a nuclear sharing army of many allies of the USA in disguise as a measure to of deterrence from the Cold War are taking part in a foundation-wide project to station nuclear weapons, and countries are equipping the Foundation's facilities with nuclear warheads is complicated for political or log logistical reasons. Oh, shit. In Germany, the TAC LWG-33 in the Buchel Air Base is the only wing of the... Luftwaffe, that still takes part of the nuclear sharing. Its pilots are made obedient with a medic agent, and the staff of the base's HQ consists of agents of the Foundation. Upon transmission of the code word Hemdal, the TAC LWG 33 leads four Tornado IDS fighter bombers with one. B61 mod 11 nuclear bomb each. The planes then fly to a standby position over SCP 028 DE. As the execution of Ragnarok is discovered, all bombers drop their bomb on SCP 028 DE and depart. The number of immediate casualties is presumed to exceed 135,000 due to the proximity. To an urban center. It is assumed that SCP 028 D E C and D are therewith destroyed and room I is buried. If not, we can only hope that O5 has something up their sleeves that is so terrible that it justifies the death of a hundred of hundred thousands. Well shit. <laughs> So, huh. So this thing 
if it breaks out, can end the world. Yeah, if but it doesn't sound like it would end the universe. Right. Yeah. So Let's see, what was the question? What was the uh, distinction between ZK class and XK class? SK class means it's end of the world scenario. ZK means end of reality scenario. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah okay so I didn't think it would be this fucking powerful but apparently it was because <laughs> when I looked it up all I got was a symbol just a single symbol yeah, that's what I was looking up images for. It's just a symbol. So that's I thought it was just a symbol of sorts. I mean, if it's powerful enough to, if it actually gets out and it's powerful enough to destroy the world, I would probably put it in XK class in that case. Yeah. Uh -oh. Or is your tier list going to be like ranking the chance of it? breaking out it, it's just as compared to it's just, just danger level just how dangerous yeah yeah it sounds like a tier but nothing worse <laughs> but peter still not exactly friendly nope <laughs> but not the nice people typically are not labeled peter <laughs> SCP-999, Keter class. Well, 999 was uh, on Keter, not because of him, but because of his dad. <laughs> Alright, so we're in ag agreement of SK. Yeah. Wait, XK or SK? XK. XK. Enunciate. <laughs> but yes, right. I agree. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, it's mainly the image. Ah. So now it's moderately hard to to distinguish it on the black background if you're not paying attention. I know. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to do that. All right. Bright. Bright, I must apologize, but my sole enjoyment out of this experience is going to be mocking you. <laughs> what? That's next, Keter. Where'd you put the chocolate? Ignore me. Why? Uh, I was talking about my birthday chocolate is top, off topic, sorry. <laughs> oh, birthday chocolate? What's your birthday? It was the 31st. Sweet. Well, early happy birthday. Yes, happy early uh, birthday. Uh, I mean, late birthday. <laughs> on Tuesday. Oh, wait. Okay, <laughs> then, uh, early, early happy birthday, but for next birthday. <laughs> Or belated happy birthday. I'm 35. No, I I refuse I refuse to be belated happy birthday. I'll just say happy birthday in advance for the next happy birthday. Uh, all right. But yeah, no belated happy birthday. All right. Are we ready for the next SCP? Yes. Sure. SCP-029. SCP-029 appears to be a pubescent female of a AJ oh shit Asianic a Asianic Indian descent <laughs> Oh, I know this one. She appears to suffer from alopecia universalis. Over 80% of her pigmentation is a true black, while the rest of her skin has a complete lack of melanin, to the point of al albinism. 
Her eyes are also a dark black in color. SCP-029 has a severe homicidal tendencies and have displayed a remarkable ability to use any item as a weapon. However, she has severe compulsion against shedding blood, preferably instead of strength to strangling her victims. SCP-029 has demonstrated dexterity in physical reactions four times as fast as the average human. SCP-029 has also displayed extensive resistance to damage of all forms. Both of these extra human abilities are greatly ha hampered in the presences of bright or direct light, natural or artificial. In addition, Addition, any males who come within the presence of SCP-029, an area defined by her current perception, find themselves pillant to her will. Such males become, become willing to kill or even die for SCP-029. SCP-029 refers herself as Redacted, which roughly translates to dar Daughter of Darkness, Daughter of Shadows, or Daughter of Night. Interviews with SCP-029 have proven difficult to conduct due to SCP-029's constant attempts to kill or convert all who speak with her. Over her years of captivity, the black patches on her skin have increased in size. SCP-029 was first brought to the Foundation's attention by an agent working in Royal in India, an attempt on his life led him to a small cult of men who claimed to be thuggies in service of the daughter. Several weeks of investigation proved that they believed the world to be the last years of the Kali Yuga, and that by sacrificing one million lives to the daughter of darkness, they could raise their goodness and uh, raise their goddess and end the world. They also believed that. Only sacrifices performed through strangulation added to this tally. Events led to the agent of their mountain fortress where he discovered SCP-029. After the loss of said agent, that expunge, which ended in our acquisition of SCP-029. So, is that it? Well, there's an addendum if you, if you want me to read that. Yeah, I was gonna say the, if I remember correctly, the addendum gives a pretty, like, significant amount of information as to how dangerous she is. All right. Let's just say she she likes to enslave men, and she's not exactly friendly to other women. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I since that. I guess we can read addendum anyway. Addendum. Uh, seven years after capture, SCP-029 began showing anomalous growth in her black pigmentation. When questioned about it, she complained her followers were on the move once more. Investigation led us to the concentration of so-called thuggies that had escaped our initial f foray. After discovering that all her followers were there for one of their holiday days, a tactical airstrike was called in. When the first bomb dropped, SCP-029 awoke from slumber, screaming at the top of her lungs. SCP-029 continued to scream for the next four hours, ranting and raving that we were killing her people. Since that event, the growth of her black pigmentation has stopped completely. Ever since that event, SCP-029 has redoubled her efforts to escape. SCP-2820 has been proposed as a possible method of neutralization should the situation worsen. Alright, so that's everything that we know about SCP-029. I suppose the uh, classification should be determined by whether or not we believe the idea that she can cause the end of the world. Right. I would think that there's generally two ways to go about this. Assume that she actually is trying to bring about the end of the world. 
or she's trying to achieve some other goal that doesn't actually bring about the end of the world. Yeah, true. And if she can't, if, like, getting enough sacrifices doesn't actually bring about an XK class, then it would probably, in my opinion, be more along the lines of a city class. Right. Because, like, if it's if it's just her followers going around sacrificing people, I doubt they could get beyond to that point. True. Honestly, I think she gets her power from her followers very specifically, which is why I also would not consider her any more dangerous than a city wide, especially since the foundation has gotten rid of most or all of her followers. Yeah, uh, that's right. true. Yeah, they wiped out the rest. Of the yeah, they did do that. So, yeah, probably city. All right. City it goes. All right. Let's see. What's next on the list? I think it's the, it's a popular one. Yep, it is. Our, our friendly manipulative asshole. 035. The mask. Yep. <laughs> Holy shit, his description's huge. <laughs> Alright. SCP-035 appears to be a white porcelain comedy mask, although at times it will change to tragedy. In these events, all existing visual records such as photographs, video footage, even illustrations of SCP-035 automatically change to reflect its new appearance. A highly corrosive and degenerative vitreous liquid constantly seeps from the eye and mouth holes of SCP-035. Anything coming into contact with the substance slowly decays over a period of time. Depending on the material, until it has decayed completely into a pool of its original contaminant. Sorry, contaminant. Fuck. <laughs> Glass seems to react with the slowest of the effects of the item, hence the concentration choice of its immediate container. Living organisms that come into contact with substance react much the same way, with no chance of recovery. Origin of the liquid is unknown. Liquid is only visible from the front and does not emerge or is even visible from the other side. Subjects within 1.5 to 2 meters of SCP-035 or in visual contact with it experience a strong urge to put it on. When SCP-035 is placed on the face of an individual, an alternate brain Wave pattern from SCP-035 overlaps that of the original host, effectively snuffing it out and causing brain death to subject. Subject then claims to be conscious uh, contained within SCP-035. The bodies of the possessed subjects decay at the higher accelerated rate, eventually becoming little more than mummified corpses. Nevertheless, SCP-035 has demonstrated the ability to remain in cognitive control of the body, experiencing several structural damage. Even if the subject's body literally decays to the point where motion is not mechanically possible, no effect is found to be had when placed on the face of an animal. Conversations with SCP-035 have proven to be informative. Researchers have learned various details about other SCP objects in history in general, as SCP-035 claims to have been in many momentaneous events. SCP-035 displays a highly intelligent and charismatic personality, being both amiable and flattering to all those who speak with it. SCP-035 has scored in the 99th percentile of all intelligence and aptitude tests administrated to it and appears to have a photographic memory. 
However, psychological analysis has discovered SCP-035 to possess a high, high, highly manipulative nature, capable of forcing sudden and profound changes to an interviewer's psychological state. SCP-035 has proven to be highly sadistic, prompting some to commit suicide and transforming others into near mindless servants with linguistic persuasion alone. SCP-035 has stated that his intimidate knowledge of the workings of the human mind and implied that it could change anyone's views if given enough time. And that's 035. Honestly, while I think its intelligence and uh, abilities could make it probably one of the most deadly SCPs due to its personality, I think at the most, if it ever got out, the most damage it would do would be city range simply because of their personality. They have no interest in doing wide damage. They just want to experience the world, but they also want to kill because that's the only way they get to experience it. Yeah. And, yeah. I would agree with that assessment as well. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> All right, S City 035, the a a a manipulative asshole it goes. I don't know why I fucking struggle, struggle to say manipulative, but all right. <laughs> hey, what, is, uh, what is that that you've put into the country? 047. Country? Oh, um, that is... Hold on, I should be able to find it. Uh, picture zero two zero uh is a mold that cannot be seen by the human eye and it's oh, basically yeah that shit yeah and it's okay, like yeah, that's fair. yeah it, it's yeah <laughs> let's see and i see that you've already put the fly in the fork into reassign <laughs> yeah <laughs> Though the one thing I would say is it's probably better if reassign was uh as as a tier was called say non dangerous, something along those lines. Because technically, like isn't keter class technically based primarily upon whether it's easily contained? So like the the fly can't actually be contained because it, it just physically can't be contained, even though it can only actually kill one person at a time. Oh no, the fly thing is just scary bugs that people think are, are terrifying. That's what that SCP is. Well, I was thinking it was the fly that, like, offers you a deal. No, no, it's just scary bugs. That's a joke SCP. That's Keter. Uh, uh, <laughs> I see. Yep. Damn. <laughs> just scary bugs. <laughs> just, just scary bugs. Okay, yeah, <laughs> wonderful. There. Yeah, okay. In that case, yeah, that that. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, let's move to the next SCP. Yeah, yeah, let's go. My complaints have been satiated. All right. Next SCP is SCP zero four seven. SCP-047 is a heavily rusted breech gas cylinder made of an iron redacted alloy. When exposed to open air, the material of the cylinder evaporates slowly, producing a previously undocumented mutagenic gas. This gas has no effect on eukaryotic organisms, but refinely alters prokaryotes, showing the preference for commonly human microbiota. The natural microorganisms that live on the skin and throughout the body. On rare occasions, this these mutations produce a superbug. Natural uh, commensal with enhanced survivability and therefore opportunist pathogenicity. The pattern of changes induced by SCP-047 
suggests that these highly infectious microbes are at least to some degree selected for. Although the specifics of SCP-047-1 species are dependent on the base of bacterium from which it is derived, there are several char characteristics that appear to be generally consistent across all cases of SCP-047-1 mutation. Enhanced survivability in bacterium's natural environment in similar environments, full-spectrum antibiotic resistance, increased re reproduction rate and consumption of available material, development of sporulation ability in gram-positive bacteria, increased ability to uptake, hold, and share plasmids, particularly in gram-negative bacteria, increased transmission due to traits described above. SCP-047-1 samples are normally uh, debilitating and virulent. However, compared to other gear class SCPs, it should be noted that SCP-047-1 have a relatively low mortality rate due to their action through mundane biological pathways. Several strains of bacteria have been selectively mutated by SCP-047. Mutation of bacteria in culture is possible, but the process appears to be much more effective with bacteria living on a human host. Gener generally, mutation of natural commensals for experimental purposes is encouraged after the containment breach of January 30th, 2010. Mutation of an already pathogenic species is banned and all existing samples must be destroyed. Alright. That's SCP-047. So it's basically just... Gas that can create extremely dangerous diseases. Apparently. It sounds like, a, despite how dangerous of a disease it is, it seems pretty easy to prevent it from spreading. Yeah, that was my thought too. Just like, wasn't it that uh, the creation of those diseases only happens when it's exposed to what was it? Just direct sunlight? Uh, to literally just uh, the open air. Open air. Okay, like for the. That makes it a bit more complicated, but for the SCP Foundation, that's practically nothing to keep it in containment. <laughs> right. But at the same time, if it was found outside the SCP Foundation, it could get very bad very quickly. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say um, it's a continent issue simply because how stupid people are. I don't want to... Yeah, mean but the thing that contagious there's always some people that will make it impossible to contain something that should be a lot less dangerous than it actually is no i can totally see someone just going by this it's containment room so oh someone left some trash here i'll throw it out <laughs> they just throw out the scp yeah to be to be very fair uh to be very fair, our designation of how dangerous this thing can be is a post-COVID designation because we have seen what seems to be the peak of human stupidity. <laughs> well, we will... yeah. I mean, the last time we've seen deadly viruses like that, people actually wanted to get rid of it. But, like, jeez. Oh, actually, people are going to have to be on like inhalators their entire life now, even after surviving. Yeah. Though, to be fair, there has always kind of been a tendency of like uh, more conservative leaning people to throw doubt upon the medical institutions that suggest doing things that could. Uh, stop the spread of viruses. A big example is the fact that the bird flu in many places struck much worse in the early 1900s because there was a lot of 
conservative pundits that just did not want to mandate masks. Yeah. Typically, people like that were put into like certain areas or groups where you could literally avoid places like that if you wanted to. Because of the internet, they're all spread everywhere, kind of. Oh, uh, yeah, fair. So, yeah, in, in terms of modern stupidity, yeah, probably continent. <laughs> Anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers. A destroyed gas canister is a continent danger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. And it's and it's less to do with the danger of the thing and more to do with the stupidity of humans. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I hope you're getting ready to laugh. Because next is SCP-048-J. A joke SCP. Oh, yay. Another one. Wonderful. All right. I hope we have a humor you can tell by the tone of my voice. <laughs> All right. Description. SCP-048-J is a set of anomalous phrases which, when spoken or written, will cause manipulation of probability in the user's vicinity. These shifts in probability are universally detrimental to the user or completion of the user's objectives and to any factors or individuals that may have been directed beneficial to the to user. SCP-048-J consists primarily of the phrase redacted, but variations of the phrase also seem to activate SCP-048-J's probability man manipulation effect. Please, is that it? I mean, I have two addendums. <laughs> Addendum. Yes, please do. <laughs> we have next to no information about this except that that it's a dumb phrase. All right. All right. Addendum one: Example of SCP-048 J's use. Audio sample from site redacted. Containment breach on redacted. Begin log. Are they still behind us? No, I think we. Out random, nasty little buggers, aren't they? Yeah, I don't think they'll find us in here, though. Uh, who are you kidding? If they don't find us, something worse will. Our good is dead already, unless the reinforcements get here in time. Come on. Okay, so maybe we're stuck in the middle of containment breach, and maybe we won't make it out, and maybe we're cut off from everyone else on the site. But look on the bright side. At least. SCP-048-J. No, you idiot. You're never supposed to say. Site Automated Announcement System. Attention all personnel. SCP-008 has breached containment. SCP-096 has breached containment. SCP-106 has breached containment. SCP-173 has breached containment. SCP-682 has breached containment. SCP-2317 has breached containment. Data expunged has breached containment. You just had to say it, didn't you? You you don't honestly think that happened because I said SCP-048-J. Data expunged. Found you. And they scream. Of course, I'm not going to fucking scream. <laughs> Closing. Uh, for fuck's sake, it... It's a Keter class SCP that is jinxing yourself. <laughs> Closing statement. In the ensuing containment breach, site redacted was, was destroyed a total of redacted anomalies breach containment, and all redacted on site personnel were killed. Agent Paula's shirt has been issued a posthumous reprimand. <laughs> so literally, it's just a jinx. It's literally, like, 100% the phrase is something along the lines of, at least it can't get worse. Yeah. Shit like that. 
Honestly, weirdly, despite it being a joke, uh, SVP, it sounds like it could even be a ZK class, which is weird! I mean, I mean, yeah, true, like, like, <laughs> yeah, that, that's actually really weird, because if this thing actually allows for situations to get progressively worse and worse when people just use it, it could easily turn into that. Also, here's one other thing. Apparently, it's also an, I, I'm assuming an entity, because it, it in, in the end of one, it said, Dana Expunged found you. Well, wasn't that more referencing the fact that they were trying to hide from a specific entity? Maybe. Oh, they, probably true. Wait. <laughs> yeah, didn't so... it start with them saying that, uh, like, yeah, along the lines of Nest, you know, nasty we're, little we're buggers. Yeah, we're safe from those nasty little buggers. So that would imply that they were already running from something, and then saying that just led to something else or those things they were running from finding them. So yeah, that. Well, that's the most dangerous SCP on the list so far, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. It's literally just jinxing yourself, and the logical consequences of that could easily lead to the end of the universe. The end of all universes! <laughs> okay, hold on, you gotta, you gotta listen uh, to Addendum 2. <laughs> okay, then. A log from Area Redacted Break Room. Junior Research Joseph Smo, Morning Redacted. Security Agent Redacted Wolf. Hey Joe, how has your morning been? Not too good. The wife just filed for divorce. Hmm, sorry to hear that. Yeah, and that's that's on top of a bunch of other stuff. This daily they literally can't get get and at this point they're in the recording, Junior Researcher Smo has been has his head shot off by Agent Wolf. Don't you ever say that in log. Closing statement. Agent Wolf has been awarded the Foundation Gold Star for bravery in the face of danger and for averting the containment breach of SCP-048-J. Research into junior researcher Schmo's past revealed that he was, in fact, a sleeper agent for the Chaos Insurgency who is meant to sabotage the Foundation operations using SCP-048-J. Oh my god. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. So literally, it can be used as a weapon. <laughs> oh my god, this joke SCP is so fucking dangerous! <laughs> like, this is... This is stupid. No, this is goddamn stupid. No, wait. But it's so powerful. You no, know it would be even worse if this was said at the UN. Oh, oh Christ! If <laughs> it's said in the United Nations, if hell would break loose. Uh, so yeah, I think we're all in agreement that this this is ZK class. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Class? I mean, I know why, but why was it that dangerous? <laughs> I don't know. The first CK is a joke. <laughs> joke of the The first CK on our list is jinxing yourself. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the most deadly thing we have come to so far. It's goddamn <laughs> jinxing yourself. Uh, well, that was a trip. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of wonder what. Can't get any worse from here. I want to know what the phrase is because the phrase was redacted, so you don't know. <laughs> Damn it! I was trying to make a joke there. God, I didn't. I didn't hear you had it. I said at least it can't get any worse from here. <laughs> oh my god! 
<laughs> All right. All right. Next SCP is uh, another one from an international branch. SCP-050-PT. SCP-050-PT is a humanoid entity currently measuring 6.5 meters in height, located at the bottom of a closed mine in Redacted National Park. SCP-050-PT's features resemble an elderly European man, with the exception of his maxilla, which possesses a muscular and bone structure that allows SCP-050-PT to open its jaw up to a 120-degree angle. Similarly, SCP-050-PT's neck is and respiratory system are finally deformed with its diameter currently measuring 80 cent centimeters. In his right hand, scp 50 pt carries a sack made of leather and a capacity of up to 150 liters. X-ray analysis made at range shows that the bones of scp 50 pts fingers and Metacarpus are extremely deformed, possibly because of the constriction caused by the constant clutching. It is believed that SCP-050-PT is incapable of opening or realizing any complex function with the flexing tendons with from that hand. SCP-050-PT is hostile to humans. If a living human comes within range of the object, SCP-050-PT will try to capture and immobilize the target. Captured humans are then consumed by SCP-050-PT in a, a process similar to that of a serpent. After consuming the individual, SCP-050-PT will lapse into a state of lethargy, growing rapidly in, in size by a measure of 1 in 100 in proportion to its own mass at the time of consumption per hour until the individual is fully digested. SCP-050-PT does not appear to possess any form of metabolism and has not been observed losing bodily mass even after long periods without feeding. Nevertheless, SCP-050-PT possesses a, a non-anomalous sleeping pattern. And that's it. That's that's interesting. Because on one hand, it's at the bottom of a goddamn mine. And on the other hand, if that thing gets out, I I think that it very easily could be XK Quest. Basically, oh, it's a contorted God. version of Ferdinand. <laughs> Honestly, you... I don't think it would uh, be an XK class. Simply because it doesn't sound like it's that interested in eating the entire world, just being left alone and eating. It, it also, parts of its body are like damaged. Like it can't. Right, so, it can't yeah. so it can't move effectively. Yeah. So it's. I think it's, its danger level is to a certain group because it has no interest in leaving its damage. It's just an elite whoever bothers it. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. It's only really dangerous to idiots. <laughs> it's only dangerous to people who want to walk up to living corpses. Mother, if you enter my room while I'm playing Minecraft again, I'm going to eat you. <laughs> you know, I'm actually playing Minecraft. <laughs> I know, I was, I was reciting like a meme, like, Mom, I'm playing Minecraft. <laughs> Mom, I'm playing Minecraft. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, just, 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 just leave Mister Corpse alone. <laughs> Let him do his thing. Uh, okay, what the? F I I'm noticing that the next image is just like a chills. 
thumbnail red circle with an arrow pointing to it. It, it, it mix matched some of the pictures, so it's not fully in order, which pisses me off. But anyway, uh, the next SCP is probably going to be the hardest one to rate. SCP-055. SCP-055 is a self-keeping secret or anti-meme. Information about SCP-055's physical appearance as well as its nature, behavior, and origins is self-classifying. To clarify how Site-19 originally acquired SCP-055 is unknown. When SCP-055 was obtained and by whom is unknown. SCP's 055's physical appearance is unknown. It is not indescribable or invisible. Individuals are perfectly capable of entering SCP-055's container and observing it, taking mental written notes, making sketches, taking photographs, and even making audio and video recordings. An extensive log of such observations is on file. However, information about SCP-055's physical appearance leaks out of the human mind soon after such an observation. Individuals tasked with describing SCP-055 afterwards find their minds wandering and lose interest in the task. Individuals tasked with sketching a copy of a photograph of SCP-055 are unable to remember what the photograph looks like as our researchers overseeing these tests. Security personnel who have observed SCP-055 uh, via closed-circuit television cameras emerge after a full shift, exhausted and effectively amnesiac about the events of the previous hours. Who authorized the construction of SCP-055's containment room, why it was constructed in, what, in this way, or what the purpose of this Describe containment procedures may be are all unknown. Despite SCP 055's container being easily accessible, all personnel at Site 19 claim no knowledge of SCP 055's existence when challenged. All of these facts are periodically rediscovered, usually by chance re readers of this file, causing a great deal of alarm. This state of concern lasts minutes at most before the matter is simply forgotten about. A great deal of scientific data has been recorded from SCP-055, but cannot be studied. At least one attempt has been made to destroy SCP-055 or possibly move it from containment at Site-19 to another site, meeting failure for reasons unknown. SCP-055 may present a major physical threat and indeed may have killed many hundreds of personnel and we would not know it. Certainly, it represents a gigantic mimetic mental threat, hence it's clear. Keter classification. And yeah, that's the description, full description of SAP-055. Yeah, that's... It's possible to know how dangerous it is or isn't. That's why I said it's the hardest one we're gonna do. <laughs> well, at the same time, the thing that I know is the fact that people are still capable of going in and out of its containment facility while not being killed, which at the very least implies that it's not hostile. That's true and technically if it has a containment which it sounds like it does that means be it since people haven't been interacting with it and can't even remember it's there that means either it's harmless or it just wants to be left alone the other thing that's important to mention is as far as i know it's probably not actually a sentient thing and rather based upon context that would be given i think in an addendum it's effectively able to be described up to it, like you can it's say not it, round it isn't 
yeah, you can say what it isn't. And that's helpful because on up in other SCPs, like SCP-5000, why, where it was effectively used by the person in the um, suit to reset the world. Right. After the SCP Foundation decided to just say fuck it and start killing everything. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a really interesting one, but to make it even remotely danger dangerous, you have to interact with it, and most interactions with it don't seem to actually lead to harm. So I would probably put it at it, it it shouldn't be reclassified because we can't actually know anything about it, but maybe just only one. Right. Do you agree with my assessment, Jerry? Yeah. Okay. We technically don't know if it's harmless or not, but we know enough that it's probably not harmless. At, 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 like, <laughs> Like, there's a difference between my brain just died. <laughs> I don't know exactly what I was about to say. God damn. No! No! no. I'm being affected by the SCP. <laughs> no, you're not. You're being affected by Let's go to the new SCP. I'm being affected by ADHD. <laughs> yes, you are. That's the new SCP. Yeah, let's, let's move on. All right. What's funny is, I'm not sure if this is, like, making fun of the previous SCP, but the next SCP is 055-J. Oh, I don't <laughs> the exact appearance, nature, and properties of SCP-055-J are currently unknown. SCP-055-J is believed to be capable of affecting individuals via sensory input as subjects are incapable of sensing its presence by any means. It is speculated that SCP-055-J actively hides its true nature. The most reasonable conclusion for that it is that SCP-055-J is an incredibly hostile entity, poss possibly of Keter, Apollyon, or even SK-class scenario levels of threat. There's really no way to conclude what this thing is, and I think it's best we assume the worst. Uh, discovery. Uh, but yeah, that that's literally the description. That's it. That, that, that's it. I uh, have an I addendum. <laughs> it belongs in only one as well, then it's stupid to assume that it's super dead deadly when it's literally killed nobody, it's literally harmed nobody, and yeah, like, it's only danger if nobody knows how it looks. I That's think it was life. making fun of O55. <laughs> yeah, like this, this sounds like the fork in terms of its ability to make people scared of it. Yeah. <laughs> We don't know for a fact it's a fork that's completely harmless. Yeah. So yeah, pro pro probably hedge our bets and make it the same as the 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 other one. My brain number's not good, but point being, yeah. Make O fifty five the same as O fifty five does. I mean, yep. make O fifty five does J the same as O fifty five. Okay, my brain. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We have a lot to get through. I just remembered how many Keter classes there are. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, uh, all right. Next SCP is O fifty seven dash PT. Let's see. Holy shit! Description's huge. Description. SCP-057-PT is characterized as the medical institution built in the year of 19 redacted, with a structure fit to about 340 singular hospital beds. The structure hosts four pharmacies, 35 medical offices, five kitchens, one storage facility, 25 office rooms, and eight laboratories. The ferocity of whether these facilities have been used to the performance of the activities, they are 
this destined for is inconclusive, although it's theorized that these rooms have been used for conduction of experiments related to data expunge. Of note, at the external gardens, there's a th three meter wall with a six meter plat in which groups of six prunus dulcis are placed, displaced in segments of three blossoming independent of the current season. To explain what prunus dulcis is, is almond trees. Anyway, uh, a significant amount of the installation's internal walls are covered by a rugous material analogous to a type of concrete. An equal relevant amount of surfaces are drawn with symbols of unknown ex exertium, though similar to catalog arcane engravings due to its innumerable indiscrecies in the cities in which experiments were conducted is possible to observe a series of codes and names and cross-referencing one another and the engravings. These efforts are written in English, thus alluding to the possibility that STV057-PT may have been present in English-speaking countries. The location does not display anomalies when visualized externally. Nevertheless, commencing the Vespertine period, it is possible to notice that the apparition of two sapient instances, SCP-057-PT-1, a female entity taking on the role of a nurse, SCP-057-PT-2, male entity taking on the role of a scientist or periodically a proper, proper medical doctor. After this event, each individual with any type of ailment, physical or psychological, within a 7 meter radius and the instance's line of sight will be transported to an illuminated room. In that room, the individual will be connected to a machine of unprecedented origin that will unravel the personality and memories of the subject, analyzing and judging its previous actions. If the subject has displayed an adequate and amicable relationship with the individuals that have been present in its life, it will be healed from all of its ailments, including terminal diseases. These subjects do not feel discomfort or fear when, whilst undergoing the probing events, considering the primary instances in the environment as pleasant. Though, if the subject has displayed an inadequate and mystical relationship towards the individuals prevalent to its life, it will experience great discomfort and aversion to both instances and the environment, undergoing a complete through maturgic transmutative process that will transform the subject into one of the following secondary instances. SCP-057-PT-3 is characterized as a powerful light with a silver triangle in its center, releasing rays of illuminating light with the intensity of 100,000 lumens. Anyone standing within a 10 meter radius of the object is affected with extreme ocular discomfort followed by temporary or permanent blindness. Any exemplary of this instance must be dispatched by the STF-PT57-A, utilizing rapid response high capacity visual equipment at their disposal. SCP-057-PT-4 is characterized as the replica of the microorganism Streptococcus phenomenae with 30 centimeters of height by 20 centimeters of width and exactly one kilogram of weight. If a subject fixates its gaze or stands in the same unobstructed environment as SCP-057-PT-4, the subject will suddenly be whelmed by asphyxia and incessant compulsory coughing, dying due to lung obstruction obstruction three minutes after manifestation of these symptoms. The organism is extremely fragile against excessive heat. For that reason, the STF-PA-P1-A have been geared with controlled incendiary rapid response equipment for deployment in case 
that terminating instances with projectiles is not possible. And that is the long ass description of SCP 057 PT. So basically, anyone who's good person goes in, gets healed. Anyone who's been a dick in their life gets turned into some dangerous thing. Which is most people on Earth. I mean, fair. <laughs> I mean, like, to make it completely non-dangerous, all you really have to do is avoid letting anyone near it. Yeah. And even at that, it's not really fully that dangerous. Yeah, like, like even the instances aren't actually seriously dangerous. Like, at the very least, when you compare them to other entities in the SCP. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I think... I think only one or certain group would be the most accurate place to put this thing. Alright. Uh, what do you think, Jerry? Jerry? Oh, they're in the bathroom. Oh, bathroom. <laughs> so it's just me and you. Then this means we can make it however dangerous. Aunt. Yes, we have no inhibitors. Make it CK class. <laughs> make it CK class. <laughs> Wait, no. Make a make 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 a new classification called ultimate CK class. <laughs> no one will ever be able to stop our misdeeds. <laughs> uh, but, uh, actually, I was about to go head off and get coffee. Ah. So, if you want to hold on to that until Jerry gets back and let them know my opinion, right? Or give them a rundown of the thing. But uh, I will be back fairly shortly. Yeah. This time, having caffeine bre beverage. Yes. Yes, it is now just me and you viewers. Thing. Um, I was thinking either uh only one or reclassified, to be honest. So since you said only one. I'll I'll agree I was, with you there. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably say it. Yes, now for everyone's well a lot a very popular SCP. Da, 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 da. SCP058. All right. SCP058 resembles a bovine heart with four anthropod-like legs used primarily for movement and four tentacles of adjustable length, covered with razor sharp spines. It has a sharp Single sharp stinger on its rear, where the hole for superior vena cava should be the typical organ. SCP 058 tentacle can be whipped to a distance of 3.2 meters at speeds that excess 320 kilometers per hour. SCP 058 is extremely hostile and uses every opportunity afforded to it to inflict damage on its surroundings. SCP-058 has been shown to be highly resilient to trauma and should be approached with caution even when apparently incapacitated. SCP-058 is highly mobile and capable of rapid movements on both horizontal and vertical surfaces and has been recorded reaching a speed of approximately 90 km per hour and short bursts covering distances up to 200 meters and has the ability to accelerate from 0 to 90 km per hour in less than 2 seconds. It has been shown What the fuck? It has been shown to use its tentacles for increased leverage and stability as well as utilizing them to pull itself to other surfaces at high speeds. SCP-058 speaks in a hu human voice 
Though no method of producing sound has been observed in its psychology, it speaks with the vocal tone and accent of an elderly British male with the slight lips and deep voice. SCP-058 talks constantly regardless of conditions, even when attacking SCP-058's voice and the pace of speech are unchanged. The speech of SCP-058 lacks any detectable correlation to events, persons, or exterior locations involved with SCP-058. Big angry bull part. See, here's the thing. Um, there's been like, um, uh, shoot. uh, there was this, uh, really tall skyscraper that actually fell on 058, and it didn't even get a single scratch on it. Like, in a <laughs> canon story. So, like, a giant skyscraper falls on it. <laughs> And it just doesn't give a shit. It does not Can't give a shit. Can you imagine, though? The thing is, okay, is it, like, hearts are inside the body, and hearts are moist, so that thing would probably be moist. So not only is its fucking feet making, like, slapping, like, gross wet noises all the time, it can fucking speak. What the fuck? And of course it speaks. <laughs> That bitch, that bitch probably sounds like fucking Jonathan Sims from oh, fucking Magnus Archives. It, that would be even fucking worse. Jerry, the SCP we're talking about now is 058. Oh. And it's, it's even worse the fact that he has a male British voice. Imagine all that on top of, like, stereotypical British voice. <laughs> oh, I have come for your kneecaps. Oh, oh I am British, I drink tea. <laughs> Oh. Oh. Hey, would you like a dab of fairy bread? Uh, I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not. This is technically not canon, but it's actually theorized that zero five eight is a child of the Scarlet King because how it came to the Foundation is unknown. Does the Scarlet King just fuck? Is that <laughs> how many what? fucking how many children are there of the Scarlet King? I'm seven. I, I could have sworn. Okay, that's seven. not a lot. That's not a lot. Okay, I could have, I thought there were more. No, that's not a lot. Okay, that's, 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 that's yeah, that's not, not a lot. lot. That's not a lot. That's not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what that sacrifice has a lot of kids to you? <laughs> my my great, great great my great grandmother had twelve children. Oh shit! I almost dropped my mic. I mean, yeah, but that's, like, average back then, because, like, to actually have, well, actually, <laughs> probably less so. I, I'm thinking more towards, uh, pilgrim days when I think of that, but anyway. Yes. <laughs> On to... Great. Let's, 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 let's move. What? Oh. Let's, let's move. Rinse it off. Rinse it off. I get it. So also, how... this is this is a fa this is a fantastical being. Too. Usually, when you talk about like fantastical beings, they have like a fuck ton of children. Seven is it? That's like a pretty tame number. Like talk, like talking about who we're talking about. Well, seven's a special number. But anyway. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to talking about the giant British cow heart yes. and, and its dangerous level, rather than how disgusting it is and how much the devil has sex. Although it is strange and it could and it looks like something he could make, honestly, it does not seem like something he would make. If that makes sense. True. It's a little too nonsensical. Like I said, and, it's only a theory. Yeah, I don't really believe the theory though. And the thing is evil and crazy and weird, but it's not. Uh, be real is it evil or is it just british is it evil or is it simply just british <laughs> look be being british does not make you evil but if you are british 
it's more <laughs> likely that you're evil. Most. This is why I'll never get any British viewers. <laughs> except for virus. Yeah, except for virus. <laughs> he leans into this bullshit. <laughs> Virus will be your one British viewer. Yes, but... Because, like, a shit ton of your content is just dickheads ragging on the Brits. I ha- I'm part of an, uh... And Bright, too. We're part of a fucking uh, Minecraft server where a good majority are, are European, specifically from, like, England and stuff. Huh. <laughs> like, but... a good, a good my friends are British. Hey. My friends are actually from England, so if you like Pop-Tarts, you like British. Anyway, uh, so how dangerous is this like SCP? Pop-tarts. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, it, it's damn near unkillable, so if it gets out, <laughs> they're kind of fucked. It's broken. It, it's looked through here, like, in notes and stuff like that. It, it looks like it's broken out multiple times. <laughs> how do you... Concerning. <laughs> so then, I, I think... I think if you call it an case, orphan, maybe, maybe it'll be like it'll leave, it'll leave. It'll get sad. You call it an orphan and then leave. Wait, it can create fire. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Post breach analysis determined a majority of deaths are attributed to fire or fire-related injuries resulting from a widespread of stinger fluid by SCP-058 from a large structure. It what the is... fuck? It is a goddamn gasoline infused cow heart. <laughs> Who made this? Wh- whose child was allowed to write? This just sounds so- like something written by a child. Actually, like, not even in a bad way. This is just like, I could not imagine. Oh. Actually, it's the most. Symbolism in it, it actually is pretty brilliant. May I? Yeah. Go ahead. I don't, I don't really read a lot of SCP shit. For one, animals like cows are one of the things associated with the devil. It also Perfect. has a scorpion, a scorpion parts, and scorpions are also associated with evil. It's also associated with trickery, assassination, and poison. So it's basically a thing that suggests that either it's evil or it's intelligent mm-hmm. or it's both. All I know is put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. <laughs> well, like I said, it also explains the fire breathing. Yeah, but um, here's here's something that's sad. Redacted by SCP-058 accounts for only eight percent of total deaths with major evidence data expunged. That was from the fire thing. He only it only caused eight percent of the deaths. <laughs> <laughs> the other ninety two percent was was not its doing. Part of me wonder wonders if there's any SCP zero five eight Gajinka art. Oh my god. <laughs> Wait, any what? Gajinka art. Gajinka art? What is that? Basically where you turn something that's not human into a human like thing. No, no, please don't make the, the <laughs> bull heart into a tumbler sexy man. No, please, God, no. No, please, no. So anyway. Penguin, Penguin let's be fair. If it was ever uh, humanized in any way, they'd probably draw it with food. Anyway. No. <laughs> anyway, so. You're, wrong. You're not wrong, but no. So how dangerous do you guys think this thing is? I think, I think, sorry. Uh, I, I would say probably city if it gets out. Honestly, with how fast it is, its destructive power and its ability to escape, I would have to say it would be a continent level, like possibly. Apparently, eventually, always get out. In like in notes, it says the only way they're able to stop it from doing its one of its rampages by running it over with a min one tank. Oh, oh, <laughs> Jesus! I don't know how that. I know it's a tank. I don't know how like serious of a tank that is. But like, oh, oh no! Isn't that like one of the United States' current standard issue war- 
tanks. Yes. Someone in Florida actually uh, rode one of those, and I'm pretty sure like they they rode it for like a good while. Like they hijacked it and then just rode around in it. What the fuck is and, up with Florida? And even I don't know. And even I then... seriously just don't. I got yelled at because I called out a transphobe, and I got yelled at. So I don't fucking know. And even then, uh, even then, it didn't even get hurt. By Jesus Christ! Down by the right. Tank. So yeah, I would like to defer to Jerry's expertise. That's probably <laughs> continent. So uh, I agree. Yeah. So as of right now, continent contains a cylinder that makes infectious diseases, and we put it there simply because it's more dangerous because humans are stupid. And giant fucking cow heart that kills everything. Yes. The exactly. two extremes. We have Humanity's stupid... stupidity. We, we... And... <laughs> and Eldritch Cowheart being. It's just an Eldritch abomination. It's uh... just terrifying. Uh, anyway, let's move on. We still have a lot of Keters to go through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it a fucking vampire? Uh, There is one, yes. Nice. Is this skeleton the SEC that I think it is, the burning skeleton? Maybe. I would put that one under certain groups since it only uh, attacks uh, people who are cheaters and abusers. Oh. Who... Well, I don't, actually I'm not know, I don't actually know that one. So. I'm not sure if that's actually the one because there's like two. I think there's one which is the burning man and then yeah, there's that one. I... That that was the one I thought it was the one where um, it's the corpse of a spouse that was abusive to their wife that they eventually accused of being a witch and had burned at the stake. Wow. Oh. Yep. And so. Uh, well, that one's next, so we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, the wife's girlfriend from uh, from basically got her girlfriend's corpse. Put it back together and like, let's get revenge on your on your husband. And he was made into the burning man. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Anyway. All right. Anyway, on to SCP-059. And this is a bit of a long one. Just letting you know. All right. SCP-059 is a radioactive mineral of unknown origin. Superficially resembling... Sheolite, a component of SCP-059, is believed to originate in its alternate universe and to be responsible for its, for its anomalous properties. In addition to alpha, beta, beta and gamma radiation, SCP-059 specimens produce a previously unknown type of radiation, apparently unique to the object, tentatively designated delta radiation. Delta radiation is accompanied by Cherokov radiation visible as a blue glow. Delta radiation is only partially contained by standard radiation shielding. The best results have been obtained using graded Z laminate shielding with an additional super dense metal layer. layer. This reduces the effective range of delta radiation from approximately 20 meters to approximately 6 meters. When an area is exposed to delta radiation for more than 15 minutes, an unknown species of fungus begins to grow on any exposed surface. This fungus does not require any standard nutrition, but will die within 24 hours of removal from a delta radiation source. SCP-05-1 is itself radioactive, but does not emit delta radiation. However, if a critical mass of SCP-059-1 is allowed to grow, delta radiation from an unknown source other than SCP-059 will appear in the area further supporting SCP-059-1's growth. Within 18 hours, the effect infected mass will become transparent and disappear, presumably into the universe that, it, that is the source of delta radiation. The process then continues with SCP-059-1 infecting new material. 
SCP-059-1 will infest both living beings and inanimate objects. Humans infected with SCP-059-1 become immune to the effects of ionizing radiation, but progressively merge with SCP-059-1, eventually have all tissues replaced by fungal growth. While generally nonviolent, they will attempt to expose unaffected individuals to SCP-059. SCP-059-1 infections do not appear to be directly contagious, but only spread by contact with Delta radiation. However, long-term exposure to SCP-059-1 has not been adequately tested to rule out considering it to be a biohazard. Inf infected individuals still capable of communication describe seeing a world entirely covered with SCP-059-1, where much of the surface is composed of SCP-059. It is unclear whether this is is a hallucination or a view into the source of SCP-059. Infectees are generally pleased with their condition and often refer to being in the blue light of heaven. SCP-059-1 is affected by most fungicides, but new growth will continue as long as SCP-059 is present. Early stage SCP-059-1 infection in humans may be treated with risofulin. However, the treatment is 90% likely to lead in to death by radiation poisoning. Threatened individuals lose their immunity to radiation and will already have absorbed a now lethal dose prior to treatment. Late stage treatment should not be attempted to f as too much tissue will will already be converted to SCP-059-1 data expunged. The remains of failed treatments should be kept out of the range of SCP-059, otherwise data expunged. SCP-059 specimens have been discovered in eight different underground locations across a range of 5,000 kilometers. No pattern has emerged for their appearance. Specimens range from 1 to 10 kilometers in, I mean, kilograms in size and are not part of the normal rock formations and the areas where they have been found. And that's SCP-059. Hmm. I mean, I did say it was a long one. It, there was a lot of science shit. <laughs> so, okay, so it kind of creates... Okay, so it creates fungus people. Like, infects people. That kind of reminds me of the virus from, uh... The Last the la of Us? La yeah, The Last of Us. Of that effect. fucking... I don't remember much from that game, but I remember. That shit fucking horrified me as a child. I mean, it, it doesn't seem entirely dangerous, because it's not hostile. Yeah, but... Rude. The fact that is an illness, or can cause illness, is, a uh... Oh, no. What does expert what does expert Jerry have to say? <laughs> expert Jerry. You have, <laughs> you have been you have been upgraded to expert because there's only three people other than Bright here, and you have consistently given interesting perspectives on the keters we talk about. <laughs> well, the way I see it, despite that it basically wants to be left alone and to perforate. It's basically using humans as its host as it perforates. It wants to spread into people as it wants to be left alone. It wants to get to grow as a, as a thing, but it also, you know, it's still infecting people. And it still wants to do that. And the people it infects are not able to become humans again. Once they're infected, that's it. So while it doesn't seem all that dangerous in hindsight, when you look at the bigger picture, it's a lot more dangerous than it seems. It's not like raising arms against people. It's not like the like Satan heart. But, <laughs> but it's actually pretty dangerous. And yeah, plus plus there's the fact that it's effectively uh 
with the amount of radiation it puts out, it might as well be a super critical nuclear core. It, it sounds very easy to contain the, the area and then like keep people out of it, but I would still put it at like a city level danger since if anyone yeah. got yeah. in, there would be no uninfecting them. Plus, if that containment ever, yeah, like if that thing ever in some way was busted out of containment, let's say, for instance, some organization gets a hold of it as a bioweapon. Oh, we know. Oh, uh, the chaos uh, insurgency. Uh, what, what was that, Jerry? I said don't say it. After Bright said it. Hey, don't, don't bring the Z-Class in here. <laughs> Don't bring the jinxer. <laughs> oh Jesus! Oh no! Oh yeah, <laughs> um, penguin. The mm -hmm. one Z X class or Z K class, yeah. which means has the potential to destroy the entire universe, yeah. is a joke SCP that is basically jinxing yourself. Oh. <laughs> the reason why we named it that is because uh, one of the addendums features some people in a containment breach one of them says whatever the phrase is and a shit ton of other scps break out as such oh. if, if people just keep using it it has the potential of getting progressively worse until the universe is destroyed <laughs> exactly <Huh. laughs> scp just funny <laughs> Does it take place as a, like a form as a person, or is it just? It's just a phrase. Yeah, it's literally just a phrase. And what the fuck? Someone, anytime someone says that phrase, which is redacted, it, the situation, no matter what, will get worse. Did it get redacted because people like were using it on purpose? Probably. One of, the, one of the one of the addendums also talked about uh, a insurgent from the chaos uh insurgency insurgency the a spy from the chaos insurgency trying to use it to fuck over the scp foundation so yes it does have the potential of being used as a weapon uh, wait a second is the only one is that third one is that a fucking doc uh not dr beast mr beast um thumbnail Wait, what? That's no, that's not a Mr. Beast thing. It looks like it's so like weirdly imaged. Are you talking about the cow heart with the No, no, no. Okay, on the only tier, only one tier and then like the third image. Oh, that one. 057 yeah. the, the daily one. grind. Yeah. Yeah. Um but uh yes, Jerry, uh I looked into it. Uh SCP-060 is the, uh, Burning Man. Oh, okay. I was right. I wasn't sure if it was the other one, you know, the, the bean that's made of pure fire. That makes sense. That thing's weird. <laughs> okay, since so we already talked about that one, we put that there. <laughs> oh, wait, no, wrong group, wrong group. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, and you've, uh, oh, uh, have you put the radiation thing in the jig yeah. somewhere? Yeah. Oh, that's the, okay, that's yeah. that blue thing right there. Okay, yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. All right, uh, now for the next SCP that, uh, I remember during, Jerry saying that they look hot. Uh, why do why, why do you bring that? Oh. SCP-076. <laughs> SCP-076 consists of two components, a stone cube and a humanoid entity contained within. SCP-076-1 is a three-meter cube made out of black, speckled, metamorphic stone. All surfaces outside and within SCP-076-1 are covered in deeply engraved patterns, correspondingly to no known civilization. 
radioisotope analysis indicates that the object is approximately 10,000 years old. A door is located on one side sealed within a lock 0.5 meters in width, surrounded by 20 smaller locks in a circular pattern. As of yet, none of the keys have been found, making the door impossible to lock once closed. Interior temperature is approximately 93 Kelvin and cannot be altered by any means, internal or external. Directly in the center of the room is a 2.13 meter tall stone coffin, held in place and sealed shut by several chains of unknown make and substance, which are attached to inner corners of SCP-076-1. SCP-076-2 resembles a lean, semantic human male in its late 20s, hair is black and eyes are gray, skin tone olive, subject is 1.96 meters in height and 81.65 kil kil kilograms in weight, numerous tattoos depicting arcane and occult Iconography are present all over the body and ranges from subtle to openly assiduous. Subjects, when encased inside SCP 076 1, is technically dead. However, occasionally SCP 076 2 will awaken, effectively reanimating complete with all vital pro processes needed to sustain a living being. Subject will then to attempt to leave SCP-076-1. If successful, subject will enter a trance in state and seek out the nearest human being, ignoring all other living things in the process when coming in contact with living humans. SCP-076-2 will enter a rage state in which it attempts to engage and kill all human beings encountered. To date, only the subject's death has been shown to be effective in ending these rampages. Terminating SCP-076-2 is often problematic due to its significant physical abilities. The subject has superhuman strength and speed, and although not invulnerable, has shown a remarkable ability to ignore pain and shock, pressing on despite what would be deliberating wounds in normal humans. Prior encounters have shown that SCP-076-2 has the ability to rip through reinforced steel security door over the course of 4 minutes of sustained assault, clear over 64 meters of distance in under 3 seconds, take multiple .50 caliber BMG rounds to the head and survive for several minutes to continue killing despite se severe damage to equilibrium. SWAT handgun and assault rifle caliber bullets out of the air with the length of a steel rebar. Survive for over one hour deprived of oxygen before finally asphyxiating. SCP-076-2's most us unusual ability, however, is its ability to apparently materialize bladed weapons out of nowhere. Slow motion video footage real reveals that the blades in question are actually pulled from miniature dimension rift uh, described as a small hole in space. Where this portal leads is unknown as is how SCP-076-2 is capable of generating said rifts. Footage of the blades in question shows them to be made out of a complete non-reflective black material appearing as a black void in space. As the blades rapidly vanish after leaving subject's possession, no structural analysis is possible at this time. SCP-076-2 has effectively been killed several times in various manners. Sustained fire from multiple heavy caliber machine guns, evasiation, crushed beneath a 13.6 metric tone piece of elevator equipment for use on SCP-076-1, cremation through the use of a thermite TH3 grenade placed directly inside of SCP-076-2's open chest cavity. During the worst breach date, containment area 25 was forced to detonate its on-site warhead 
as the last attempt to contain SCP-076-2 while I was attempting to escape, resulting in total destruction of the site and all on-site personnel, SCP-076-1 survived. Upon death, SCP-076-2 is remained will, uh, will putrefy rapidly until reduced to dust. SCP-076-1 and the coffin within will then slam shut with great force and the lock will rotate, sealing it shut. SCP-076-2 will then reform within the coffin, a process taking anywhere from 6 hours to 25 years. What posthumous analysis of SCP-076-2 exists shows that it is an, has an a internal system highly different from our own, documented in data expunged. And that's 076. So, an mm. SCP that takes the fact that people exist very personally. You gotta love it when an entity is not only extremely hostile, but can goddamn survive a nuke. <laughs> there, se there seems to be a, 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 a pattern with uh, Keters and not liking humans and being immune to most human things. I like human-made uh, things. So, I can't remember exactly if it was probably mentioned. But is there, like, a necessary amount of time where it will be brought right back to the coffin? Or can it just rampage indefinitely? Um, it, basically until it dies. <laughs> it will be brought back to the coffin. <laughs> okay, so then I would say continent level. Drew, what do you think, since this is the one you thought was hot? Bringing that up. <laughs> <laughs> that would be worse than continental, cause like, if that fucker hears that humans exist on other fucking continents, <laughs> I have very, I have very few. Like that bitch would make it over there, I just think rage. He takes humans existing as personal, and more that he enjoys murdering humans. Yeah. Man, <laughs> I did have to say it this time. <laughs> but anyway, he also hates Kane. He hates Kane, by the way. Oh, right. Yeah, because this is Abel. Yeah, Kane and Abel. He hates Kane. I'll put some art and dumb posts of. Wait, which uh... bitch got hit over the head with a rock? <gasps> oh! A, fun, a cool thing about uh, is 076. 076 is the reason Dr. Bright became Dr. Bright. Hmm. Really? Yeah, do, 076 killed Dr. Bright while he was holding an amulet. Alright, so in other words, given given our experiences with the good Dr. Bright, it should probably be a CK class. <laughs> No, in actuality, um... Don't mind me flooding pictures of him in dumb pose. <laughs> so, uh, Jerry, do you agree with Continent as well? Mm, yeah, Continent. It's like... He's not interested in destroying anything else besides people, and actually... Mm, he would actually, since he has been shown to be willing to attack SCPs as well, I would say SK class. Oh shit! Oh, that's right. He he actually didn't he attack six eight two. Yes, and remember, he used to be part of the task force when they thought maybe we can use him. That's right. I forgot they did that. Yeah. Mm. So SK class. S yeah. SK. <laughs> Damn, is he hot. <laughs> but wait, like... Why does he not have nipples? <laughs> wait, hold on. <laughs> if you look at some of those art pieces, you will find... Anyway, Hatchet, what, what were you saying? The thing I was gonna say is, like, I don't see how him being willing to attack 
SCPs necessarily makes him more dangerous. Because it, it, it means uh, he is willing to kill anything that has blood. Base. Well, at the same in... he, he, he just finds it fun. He doesn't do it because he's told to. He just likes doing it. Well, right. Yeah, but at the same time, my question is, uh, let's say he gets out and kills every person on a single continent. And thing, anything, everything that's alive that Any... has blood. No, I thought, I thought that, I thought that he only cared about humans. If if you look in his history, he's also been known to attack SCPs. He well, living yeah. humans and SCPs. It says he ignores. Yeah. Other living things, but like living things and SCPs, he'll only attack. Exactly. So he won't go after so, like a dog or something like that. He would just exactly. So he isn't a monster. That's all I'm hearing. From from that perspective, <laughs> he's not a monster. <laughs> if so, you if, okay, you're a monster. Anyway, you like attack innocent like dogs and stuff. Anyway, hatchet your. If you saying. attack a human, well, actually no. If you do attack like an innocent human being, that's kind of fucked up. Anyway, no hatchet. shit. Anyway, (laughs) I was trying to point out is that one, we would have, like, if he, uh, say, kills everyone on the Eurasian continent, let's just say he's gotten that far to murdering everyone, to actually end all of humanity, he would have to cross over to another continent, which would take either A, he knows how to fly a plane or some other vehicle, Mm -hmm. Or B, he would have to swim. And we know that he is susceptible to drowning. Or he could enter the soil under the ocean and move that way. He can fucking do that? Is that something he's actually managed to do? Um, And even then, like, he would still... But it seems like something he could do to me. But even then, he would still need access to oxygen, or he's going to eventually asphyxiate. Well, yeah, he's got like an hour. Yeah, like, he can go without oxygen for an hour. So, assuming he uses the ocean, it's already going to be pretty hard to swim that distance. Especially if we start dealing with, you know, actual ocean waves. I don't think he would actually swim. Well, then how would he get across the ocean? Float. Maybe he killed someone with a boat. He killed someone with a boat. Maybe he just fucking made a boat. He is from, like, olden times, right? Maybe he just fucking makes a boat. Well, I mean, that's that's the best I can. And take their boat. But then we have to... Well, I mean, then it's either, A, an extremely small boat that's going to eventually run out of fuel... Or B, it's a large boat that requires more people to man for it to actually function. Or it's a boat that doesn't use gas and instead uses oars. Yeah, but at the same time, that's still incredibly subject to the dangers of the waves. I like... Like, I like how this is the one SCP we're arguing about, and not over like the joke SCP or the fucking O fifty five. Because the joke SCP doesn't like, like the joke SCP is one that can be activated at any time by anyone. This is a being that is restricted to some level of mortality, in sense of it dying will stop it. As such, I think that it would once killing everyone on a single continent be limited to that continent. I do not think that it would be able to manage to get across to another continent. What the fuck kind of weird art do some people even make? How did I run into this? <laughs> it's what? okay. What? Uh, I'll put it in actual... Blue! But uh, anyway... No. Oh. oh, that's not... Oh. So, should, should I move them back to continent? Yeah. All right. He goes back. Right. Ah, ha, ha. My rhetorical skills have. What? What? <laughs> I'd say hypothetically. Thing. No, let's not say hypothetically and move on. No, <laughs> no, no Shapiro talk in here. I don't, feel, I don't feel like having my brain cells rapidly implode on themselves. Okay, let's move on. Oh, oh goody! Who's ready to laugh again? Do you?
Do you think? Do you think there's some? I don't think I'm going to laugh after the crackdown fan art I found. Is there? Is there catboy fan art of that man? Oh, Maybe. Shit. No, no, it's it's it wasn't the it wasn't cat fan art I found. I'm not going to describe. That. Anyway, I've seen the next SCP. This this is children. You know, you're not far off, dragon. I hate children. So, anyways, uh, ZK class. Anyway. ZK, uh, immediately ZK class um, anyway. because I hate children. All right, here, here it is. SCP-078-J is a highly contagious biohazard spread through physical contact with SCP-078-J-1. Although the properties of SCP-078-J are not fully understood, it is well known for causing various cases of yuckiness, bad smells, and immediate death. SCP-078-J-1 is a malevolent creature that typically inhabits an area that colloquially known as the playground. There are several different versions of SCP-078-J in that will wander this area at a given time. Current research performed by junior researcher James has pointed towards SCP-078-J-1 possibly being extraterrestrial in origin and would certainly explain why they don't like Power Rangers. Prolonged exposure to SCP-078-J carries result in expansion of the larynx, development of the special organs, and increase in body bodily growth and sprouting of various hairs around the body, as well as mark fondness towards SCP-078-J-1. Researchers agree this is totally gross. By the way, the codename for this SCP is Cooties. So did you just whisper Cooties? Cooties. Okay. That's actually, isn't that like a zombie uh, movie? Yes. Like, oh, like... hold on. Here, here, Here's footnotes. You gotta hear this. Junior researcher James has been committed for his quick thinking during incident 536-J-3, during which a group of SCP-078-J-1 surrounded him in an attempt to perform a makeover. Researcher James Culvery re reached a finger into his nose and pulled out a large booger, with which he fended off SCP-078-J-1. Uh, Cooties. Cooties. Yeah. Cooties. 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 This is just cooties. I... Is this thing actually dangerous? <laughs> I mean, it says it is well known for causing various cases of yuckiness, bad smells, and immediate death. Well, it's it's something to do with children. So, like I say, it's a X. Uh, t wait, ZK uh, class. So, listen, these children are not going to cause the end of reality. <laughs> Have you seen children? <laughs> yes, I'm talking to one. <laughs> Have you seen iPad okay. children specifically? Okay. Have you seen iPad children so, specifically? Here's the thing. When I said a development of the special organs, I was replacing special with another word. Yes, we all know. <laughs> I don't even want to know, honestly. I just... Dragon, we just know put your mind in the gutter and you'll know. I No, that's why I don't want to know. <laughs> that's why I don't want to know. So... We don't... We don't need even more of this stream to need to be edited out. <laughs> I think, anyway. I think the, the weird oh, Minecraft wow. mod did enough. I think the weird Minecraft mod did enough of editing. Is reclassified? Reclassified. Yeah, I, I completely agree. This this thing is incredibly stupid. The only one who thinks it's dangerous is the child who wants to say children are dangerous. And the researcher. <laughs> Who fit it off of the booger? <laughs> I'm sorry, Penguin, but you are not dangerous. You are just adorable. So I think we had a good laugh of it, whatever the what the fuck that was. <laughs> I have a stone brick wall. Next SCP. <laughs> All right. 
SCP-083 appears to be a uninhabited two-story row house in a general state of disrepair, with an exterior in, uh, with an interior of approximately 366 square meters. It is located in a redacted block of redacted. The deed and property tax records for the address are missing after redacted. The last known persons to reside at the addresses were the redacted family, but data expunged. Until acquisition by the foundation, the property was a reputed office for local narcotics dealers who dealed entry to the structure through the front window. Since the locking mechanisms on both the front and back doors were corroded and frozen shut, SCP-083 first came to the foundation's attention on redacted. When I love it when an SCP's information is majority redacted, don't you? <laughs> when, an, when an altercation outside the building resulted in the front door being kicked in by data expunged. Those who entered through the door of SCP-083 allegedly found themselves inside a fully furnished and well-maintained home with functioning electricity and fully stocked kitchen whose appliances and decor appeared to be from the early 20th century. Personnel who entered through the windows described the interior as it as dark and dilapidated, corresponding to the view. Dilapidated, uh, corresponding to the view through the windows. Personnel in, in the first group also reported that they couldn't see, hear, or find any members of the second group besides the house, or of anyone else besides themselves. The second group observed that. Members of first group seemed to vanish into thin air upon crossing the door's threshold. Both groups inside the property could not only describe very different living conditions, but their descriptions didn't even correspond to the same floor plan. Their descriptions matched only in the re relative position of the windows, since both groups saw the same street view. Personnel outside the group house, however, reported only seeing members of the second group. These observations, observations were repeatedly te tested and confirmed by staff, with the additional finding that, that the rear door of SCP-083 also leads to a furnished interior, interior a non-conventional entry, leads to, to the dilapidated interior and the persons inside, the different interiors are unable to detect each other's presence, although they both register on standard spectral imaging equipment. So long as, they, as said equipment is outside of SCP-083. It is also discovered that the furnished interior is not static. The floor plan of SCP-083 apparently changes with a different layout and different numbers and kinds of rooms manifesting. No clear pattern or set interval has been observed in the rearrangement of the interior of SCP-083, but the phenomenon has never been directly observed or experienced by personnel while inside SCP-083. So long as the human presence exists inside the floor plan seems to, to remain stable, although the furnished interior appears to be well maintained, no inhabitants or custodians have ever been detected. So, how is this a keter? This is just not a fucking threat. Yeah, that's not at all. Why? Why is this a keter? Is there any additional information? Uh, I can read some addendums. Hold on, addendum. It has been recommended that SCV-083 be evaluated as a possible autonomous object. Document number 083-A, 19 walkthroughs of SCP-083 have been conducted to date, redacted, and each has produced a unique floor plan with a combined total of 150 different, uh, 154 different rooms, with 17 of those rooms present on more than one walkthrough, though in different locations. The rooms conform to a variety of decorative styles, representative of major artistic trends of the late 19th and 20th centuries. Complete with an area appropriate furnishings and technology, however, each of the 19 floor plans 
still equaled 366 square meters of space. And in each walkthrough, the front door has so far consistently led directly to the same Victorian front parlor designated FP-0, the rear door data expunged. Addendum to number 083-A. Upon compar comparative analysis of all recorded floor plans for SCP-083, it has been observed that the small door in the north wall of, of FP-0 always opens up to reveal a closet. Though the dimensions of the con contents of the closet have varied considerably, a teal and white deluxe convertible upright Hoover vacuum cleaner that has been observed among the contents of over 60% of the time. It is unknown why of the three doors leading from FP-0, this one has shown such a high level of conservation that none of the others have. Alright. Document number 08, it's fine. Document no, number 083-C on redacted, Dr. Redacted entered SCP-083 through the front door and set up three digital video cameras. One was placed in the middle of FP-0, a second camera on the second floor between DR-2 and K-4, and a third camera in the basement room ST-1. Personnel entering through FP-0 window A were unable to confirm the existence of any of the rooms nor of the three cameras, though the camera's locations inside SV-083 are externally confirmed with EM sensors. Observation was conducted for a period of 48 hours, during which time no personnel were allowed to enter, no movements within SV-083 or any of the rooms were observed. And the camera locations remained fixed. After 48 hours, agents were sent in to retrieve the three cameras, but only found one. The camera in FP-0 at its electronically confirmed location, the other two cameras in the rooms in which they were placed were gone, with different rooms in their place. Despite this, the EM sensors continued to detect electrical signatures of the, of the other two cameras, indicating that they had not shifted position at all. Sweeps of SCP-083 were made hourly for the next 36 hours, although... Oh, shit. What? What? Wait, what? Hold on. I... What? That Did oh, it... shit does not sound good. Did... Are you reading the wrong SCP? Maybe. Right. I, th I might have wrote. I might have wrote it down wrong. Uh, that makes sense because, like the the like the, the picture doesn't make sense because it's a vampire and then like it's a room. <laughs> Ignored it. What happened? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> then what, what were we supposed to be looking at? Oh my. Future Bright, do not edit this out. This moment needs to be taken <laughs> Shut up, for all of humanity. Oh, anyway. SCP-038-D appears to be a Caucasian male aged between 20 and 26, black hair, brown eyes, and 1.83 meters tall. Most often wears unremarkable clothing. Subject has identified himself by the name Duke. However, he does not mind being called SCP-083 or simply 83 by personnel. He spends most of his time wandering the grounds of site redacted or the recreation room making conversation with staff. SCP-083 has no physical need to eat, although he often orders food. He seems to refer meat, and several commonly known brands of confectionery have been ordered. Subject has no need to sleep either, but still requested a bed for his containment area. When asked about this, he replied, I feel like laying down sometimes. I don't think that there is anything unusual about that. 
staff interacting with SCP-083 have often reported him as general and polite to the majority of the staff. Although some of the female staff have reported him to human resources for numerous counts of sexual harassment, this behavior oh, is to be strongly discouraged, and if complaints persist, he is to be locked in his containment area, area permanently. When tested for intelligence with a standard IQ exam, he scored over 155 and has displayed remarkable logic and problem solving skills. Even being able to cause several breakthroughs of SCP redacted, SCP redacted, and SCP redacted. When questioned about his existence prior to the capture by uh, SCP Foundation, he often claims to remember many historical events, the earliest being execution of John Rogers in 1555. He claims to have seen data expunged. If SCP-083 is not fed blood every 12 hours, subject will become highly enraged and aggressive, attempting to break out of its containment. This seems to be a sort of self-preservation instinct, much like that of an animal deprived of food, only on a much greater scale. When the state SCP-083 will actively seek out humans and attempt to feed off of them, subject can only be pacified if he can find a human fitting the standards for blood. When he finds a satisfactory food source, subject will become cannibalistic, completely consuming it if it is human, or if the blood is found in a pack, he will merely drain it. Upon sating his hunger, subject falls into a comatose state for roughly 12 hours, and the feeding schedule must be recentered around his new cycle. When questioned about these rages, he claims to have no memory and refuses to speak of it, at one occasion even becoming violent. When submitted to a polygraph test, data expunged. SCP-083 seems, seems to have a regenerative property similar to that of SCP-076 and will regenerate even upon apparent death. That was the actual SCP I was supposed to read. You confused... That makes sense. You, you confused house... There's one thing. There's only we, one weird touching thing empire. difference. Those were, all very, those were different. Totally different. The, one has a D. One has no, no D. It is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. It's it's zero eight three dash D and zero eight three. And one of them is one hell of a D. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> anyway, how dangerous do you think he is? Uh, I'm thinking reclassified. Besides being, like, one. really touchy, uh, like, weirdly touchy, yeah, no, reclassified. I, I mean, like, A, he's already a piece of shit, but besides mm -hmm. that, uh, like, if he's failed to be fed, then right. he becomes murderous, but that, uh, that it only extends to a single person. So I would say only one. I agree with only one. Uh, that makes sense. Yes. Alright, so what what safe class SCP are you going to read to us now? Actually, that one, last one was Euclid. <laughs> Fuck you. Why the fuck would that be Euclid? <laughs> I don't know why that I mean, it makes people Euclid. trip all, so like that. <laughs> like people are really scared of it, even though it literally has no means of breaking containment. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, I mean, that would probably like fuck up someone's sense of reality. So, like, maybe that. So that's psychological that's... horror. So I want to ask you guys a question. Uh, how do you guys feel about Rubik's cubes? I don't like them. I have never been able to solve one. Uh, they are my worst enemy. Oh, then you're gonna hate this SCP. Oh, I'm I'm going to melt that plastic. SCP-090 was located and retrieved and redacted, redacted on April 10th, 19 redacted. Prior to Why is it all redacted? <laughs> That's my worst enemy right now. Why is it all redacted? Prior to it's retrieval. Prior to retrieval, SCP-090 has been located in a chamber at the nearby cathedral. SCP-090 was 
was removed. The cathedral burned. Hello. 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 Oh. Anyway. All right. Cathedral burned six months and the priests were terminated. SCP-090 has been located at Site-19. Uh, Site redacted. Sorry. I don't know why I said 19. Since the retrieval object's initial location prior to the cathedral is unrecorded. SCP-090 is a black cubic structure made of unknown ceramic material. Object is classified as indestructible following tests outlined in document 090-B. Each side is divided into 10,000 individual squares, an arrangement similar to a Rubik's Cube. Each square has a part of design etched in, into the surface, etchings glow white. Unknown eternal structure causes the realignment of a single row or column every 2.8 seconds. Vague records of the object's alignments have been kept since 1242 CE, but those kept before 15 CE have been lost. Modern technology has allowed the exact alignments to be Im imaged and recorded as well as studied. Segments are divided into a thin white line, unless they are aligned correctly with the square directly adjacent to them. Here are two, 22 correct alignments on the object surface currently. Oh, well, it, they lo we lost one. Oh, well. What, what happened? Mitchell left. Oh. D-02316-024016-024. 015 is currently the only alignment of three adjacent segments on the surface of SCP-090. B-100023-100024 0990024-098024 and C-043077-042 042077-042076-042075 are the four yeah, segment friends. alignments. <laughs> there is also a six al segment alignment. Full item completion has been hypothesized to cause an, an unparalleled disaster to occur. So if it's completed, we're fucked. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> I would I would personally rather die than have to solve that thing. I mean, uh, it would be it would make sense because like it said before, like entire church were killed, like burned. I'm assuming they tried to complete it. Did they drive themselves to insanity? I mean, it said, uh, Cathedral burned six monks and a priest were terminated. So, does this cube create fire? But I mean, it causes an unparalleled disaster to occur, so I wouldn't doubt it. But I mean... My question is, yeah, so why you... is this in the hands of the SCP Foundation. This thing is just not going to be a threat to anyone. <laughs> Unless, like, Dr. Bright gets their hands on it, I think everyone's okay. fine. Actually, yes. Do that. What you should be worried about is if um, a different group takes it, because certain groups have been known to break into the SCP Foundation and steal certain items. Church of the Broken God. SCP security, and, so and good yet hand. so bad. Honestly, I worry about the serpent's hand more about the, than the Broken God because the Broken God has at least been shown some signs that they're willing to work with the SCP Foundation. The serpent's hand's just an asshole. Yeah. Is it the serpent's hand that made 610? I think it's still unknown. But the Church of the Broken God found a cure. You can actually destroy 610. Yeah. And they've actually worked with SCP Foundation in the past to destroy it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, 
how do you, how do you think you uh, rank in danger of this Rubik's cube? <laughs> it could destroy someone's mental health, but besides that, I don't think it's yeah. not it's not that bad. In, in full item completion, it can cause like a huge disaster to happen. Yeah, but it's like really fucking hard to solve. It could cause massive death and destruction if the wrong people have it. But currently the wrong people don't have it. Right. So it should put it as destructive as if the serpent can have it, or as destructive as the SCP Foundation continuing to keep it safe. I mean, there are experiment logs, so the Foundation has fucked with it. Oh no. Uh, Why would they fucking do that? These are the people who are constantly like poking and prodding the great the giant lizard, right? Yeah. Like that's fair. <laughs> Wait, so, what type of like giant serpent are we talking about? Like Midgar serpent type yeah, or I'm like Unkillable lizard. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. How the fuck? Anyway, uh so wh- where should we put this? I don't want to imagine an unkillable lizard because I live in Florida and there's so many fucking little lizards. I don't want to imagine one of those fucks that can't die. I'm pretty sure there's one in my room. You know what? Since since it has the potential of put making someone insane, I'd say only one because there is still some slight danger, but it's in the hands of people who are the least likely to make it dangerous. Honestly, um... At the worst, it would be continent level danger, but it's currently in a group that, the hands of a group that keep it from being used that way, so. Yeah. Yeah, only yeah. one. Only one until the serpent's hand gets it. I hope that doesn't change anything. <laughs> oh no. Wait. Yeah, oh no. <laughs> no. The- no, Jerry, what have you done? SCP 48 J is activated. SCP 048 J has been activated. Yeah. The, the fucking, just the fucking, the, the Terraria boss me- message shows up of, you hear, you feel your, you feel your sins scroll down your back, and just the, the giant words show up of the, the Rubik's Cube.